Hey there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to yet another... Wait, wait a minute. This isn't Doom. This isn't Doom at all. Actually, this is Half-Life. That's right. I've decided to branch out a little bit and take a look at interesting mods from other games across the spectrum. And this time, in good old-fashioned mod madness, we're going to be checking out Caged. As an interesting little aside before I get started here, this is also created by an ex-Valve employee by the name of Kale George, who more recently works for Guerrilla Games, taking on level design and game design for the likes of Horizon Zero Dawn. So this is going to be fairly interesting, seeing an old hand come back to Half-Life and play in that particular sandbox. You may also notice some rather pleasing sounds coming from this as well, and that's because Caged also features music by the esteemed synthwave artiste, Laserhawk. So, bearing all of that in mind, you could say that I've got some reasonably high expectations for Caged. Let's just see if it lives up to the pedigree of the talent behind it. Will we ever make it out of here? I'm not certain. No! I don't want to die! Ugh! So what exactly do you get up to during the course of Cage? Well, as you might reasonably assume, one of the first things you'll need to do get is get out of this cell. Preferably before midnight too, because according to the game, that's when you're going to be scheduled for execution. Why? No reason, but it's a good incentive in any case. This opening section will also introduce you to the fair amount of bugs pushing that you'll be engaging in during the course of this mod. In this case, you'll be using them to reach a pressure valve on the top of these pipes, and it'll also introduce you, or reintroduce for people who've played Half-Life back in the day, to the very awkward concept of crouch jumping. Otherwise, yeah, it's going to be tough to reach that particular spot. Once you've turned the valve, however, all you really need to do is step back and wait for the fireworks, because that pressure will build up and eventually explode. Something that my scientist chum over there is um, not very aware of. You know, th there is that loud hissing and the shaking. You should, you should probably, you should probably move. Oh. Anyway, time to leave. First step in my great escape is making my way down these pipes as quickly as possible because believe it or not, the sound of gunfire coming from the cell above is not just for show. If you loiter for too long, it'll probably kill you or at least give you a few points of damage, which is why the plunger here is actually quite useful, despite looking like the most inefficient melee weapon of all time. You can use it to break open these boxes, get yourself some first aid kits and patch up any points of damage you may have taken. It's a shame that little initial burst of adrenaline doesn't last any longer than it does. I was hoping for a bit more of a protracted escape from the cell sequence. Maybe a few more explosions or exploding pipes going off in the background. But no, the first chunk of this involves a lot of vent crawling, a lot of traversing the bowels of the facility, and occasionally dying to fans. If anything, this entire chapter, much like that opening section where you have to climb on the boxes, seems to be in place just to get you reacquainted with how the mechanics of Half-Life operate, because if you're not aware, Caged is a fairly recent mod. This is something that was released this year, and for many people, Half-Life may be a game that they haven't revisited in a long time. Thankfully, it didn't really take me too long to shake off the rust. The only embarrassing death that I suffered during this part was thanks to the fan, which, again, was moving far too slow for me to consider it a threat, but chalk it up to a lesson learned. When you finally do run into your first enemy here, you make a horrifying realization, namely that they're really friggin' hard to kill. I mean, jeez. Okay, that was probably a bad example. After all, I was trying to kill a soldier with a sink plunger, but still, when it comes to taking down enemies with legit weaponry here, it still takes a shocking amount of time. I, I don't remember soldiers being that tough in Half-Life. Maybe it's something that I forgot over time. Because even when you're up close and personal with a weapon such as the shotgun here, in most cases, they just tend to shrug off the first blast, often taking two, even with the double alt fire, to take down, which, I gotta admit, feels kind of unsatisfying. The net result of this is, rather than offering a run-and-gun style experience, something that I'm a lot more accustomed to, Caged instead offers a more stop-and-pop gameplay style, having you cautiously approach new encounters, because running in full pelt will often just get you riddled with bullets. 
That said, there does seem to be a degree of artificial difficulty at work here in Caged. A lot of encounters structured to simply sap you of health and force you into an awkward position when you have to get through the next area with no health packs in sight. Rather than generating tension, more often it just generated frustration, especially when you have to deal with the dated physics engine here, causing great throws to be a little bit of a case of pot luck. As for the look of Caged, for the most part you'll be traveling down tremendously grey corridors and into tremendously grey rooms. The only real visual flair seems to be the rusty pipes and the signs that you'll occasionally find affixed to the walls, of which there seems to be many humorous ones, and that comes as no surprise when you discover that the creator of this also had a hand in Portal 2, which had a pretty good stake in the humorous signs department. The drab visuals, however, do have some kind of a justification when you consider the environmental storytelling of Caged. This whole facility, for example, is intended to be an automated prison, and prisons in general, you're not gonna have them looking flashy. They're gonna be oppressive places, and they're not really gonna skimp for interesting fixtures and fittings just for the sake of an escapee running through its halls. There's also a bit of an advantage to having a grey base environment, it's that anything you put on top of that is gonna pop a lot more visually. For example, the stations here with vital buttons that you'll need to press to progress are really hard to miss. So in that respect, I can certainly praise Cage for not being confusing in terms of progression and what I need to do or press next. Overall though, I feel like there was a missed opportunity in Cage for visual flair, especially when you can Consider the soundtrack by Laserhawk. It conveys all sorts of neon infused mayhem, maybe a bit of interesting highlights running down these corridors, for example, just to liven things up a bit. And speaking of the soundtrack, it always drops out far too quickly. Just keep the damn thing playing, don't take it away. I need all the motivation I can get to get through these bloody, frustrating sections of mod where I'm constantly dying. And so we reach the finale of Cage. That's right, we're here already. This mod only really runs about an hour according to the footage I have recorded. And you gotta remember that also includes all of the deaths and reloads and quick saves that I indulged in just getting through this. Leading me to believe that a lot of the difficulty in here is pretty much there for the sake of padding. Seriously, there's not many situations here you can run into without getting steamrolled at least twice before you get the hang of it. If there's one thought that dominated all others during the course of this finale, it was how much of an utter pain in the ass it is to endure, because all of the frustrations that are present during the early stage of this mod become magnified here at the end. The constant low health, the bullet sponge enemies, the style of having to peek around corners just to find a little moment of opportunity. Only in this case, you're also finding yourself being mowed down by a helicopter for what feels like the umpteenth time. Gotta admit, it's not a lot of fun. Ultimately, at its core, Caged is a very rigid gameplay experience. There's not a lot of freedom for you to tackle these situations. In fact, most of them have to be tackled just so. Only the game doesn't really see fit to provide you with any kind of script in advance. Maybe I should rephrase that. It doesn't really give you a lot of clues. In fact, this is where you just end up reloading, retrying, dying, and just getting overall pissed off with the mod in general. There was a moment though, right near the end, where I nearly completely gave up on this. And it wasn't the helicopter, as you can see, I nailed that. I figured that sequence out. I had it down to a T after something like five or six tries. Now, what got me was after taking down that helicopter and opening this ridiculously slow gate, I thought, I'm home free. I'm done. All I have to do is get to the boat, get rid of this guy. Let's just climb down this ladder and we'll be on our merry way. And guess what? Fell off the friggin' ladder. Good grief. I was not a happy chappy. I didn't let that break me though. Oh hell no, I wasn't gonna let that break me. I have defeated more imposing ladders in my time. So I dusted myself off, had myself a cup of tea, came back and nailed the sequence all over again. Because unfortunately, the quick save I had was all the way back in the vent. 
Overall, though, I was just glad to be at the end because it was a frustrating experience, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, a bit of a letdown from my initial expectations. The pedigree of the author didn't really follow through into something that I personally found satisfying or exciting to play, which is a little bit of a shame. I felt, unfortunately, railroaded for the most part of it, and the campaign in of itself was criminally short. It bills itself as having a full single-player campaign, but yeah, like I said, this clocks in at under an hour, even with all the problems that I suffered. So that was Caged, an unfortunately underwhelming entry into the pantheon of Half-Life mods, but don't just take my word for it. The link is in the description below if you feel like checking this out for yourself. Maybe you'll enjoy it where I didn't. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments, and feel free to suggest any mod you'd like to see me cover in future episodes of Mod Madness. This has been Mr. Icarus. Thank you very much for watching. Icarus out.